people don't just pass certification exams for my videos instead they pass with flying colors which is well evident in the comment section of my previous videos all right this question will test your concepts on one of the six pillars of aws well architected framework that is reliability so let's first begin by marking the keyword always do this in real world exams so as to arrive at the correct answer now let's first look at option c and d c says save the data to root file system while option d says save the data to elastic block store we know that session data are temporary data which we need for very short duration hence we don't need to store them for long duration or long term like on the root file system or elastic block store hence these two options are incorrect let's move to option a now option a says save the data to ec2 instance store the problem with ec2 instance store is that for any reason say the ec2 instance is down then the session data will be wiped off or lost forever which we certainly don't want as per the question because the question demands the session data should be written reliably so this will not meet the pillars of AWS well architected framework in terms of instance store hence we can reject option A as well and if we look in the official documentation as I always back my answer with official documentation so as to ensure its maximum correctness it's written in the event of a node failure the session would not be entirely lost elastic cache offers in memory key value stores include include elastic cache for redis which can support replication so that's what is required by the question hence we'll lock save the data to amazon elastic cache as the correct answer for this all right all right we have an interesting question and it's related to lambda and cloudwatch logs let's first look at option b and d together b says lambda is missing cloudwatch log as a source trigger to send log data while well, option d says lambda is missing a target cloudwatch log group interesting option but aws lambda function is connected to cloudwatch by default and there is no way to disconnect or disable it so these two options becomes invalid let's now move to option a a says lambda does not have any explicit log statements for the log data to send it to cloudwatch logs we know that whenever lambda function is executed or run lambda logs will always have the data in it for example the memory usage and the time of execution of lambda function will always be present after lambda function is executed therefore again incorrect choice we'll reject option a as well and quick tip for the exam whenever you need to debug some kind of error in the question then options containing permissions related issues should be the potential answer which we have in option c so looks good and will lock c as the correct answer all right we have another question related to aws lambda and s3 bucket this time let's first look at option a e says s3 bucket should be made public we know that if we make a bucket public then it would be accessible to the entire world if we are working in any company then definitely we don't want to leak the data to the entire world definitely and especially to the malicious users since this solution is not secure as required by the question so we'll reject this let's move to option b b says lambda function should not be invoked directly from s3 event whenever any kind of negative keyword is there then the chances of it if being incorrect it can be very high so we have this word should not this is a negative word as far as reasoning is concerned for this option amazon s3 has direct integration with lambda function so there is no reason not to invoke the lambda function so b becomes incorrect again let's move to option c c says resource based policy for the lambda function lacks permission to be invoked by amazon s3 resource based policies allows principals to assume it 
This can be one of the potential answer. We'll park this. Let's look at option D. D says S3 event notification won't work. Interesting. For files larger than 1 GB. I don't think so. There's any kind of limit. And in fact, there's no such limits like 1 GB for S3 event notification. This is just a distractor. We can reject option D as well. Quick tip for the exam as mentioned in the previous question as well that whenever you get questions related to debugging then options containing the permission related stuff becomes the correct answer. Just like this one again, option C. If you look at the official documentation it's written, you can use Lambda to process event notification from Amazon simple storage service that is also known as Amazon S3 can send an event to Lambda function when an object is created or deleted. You configure notification settings on a bucket and grant S3 permission to invoke a function. This is the keyword, right? Hence will lock C as the correct answer. All right, we have a brainstorming question and this time it's multi-choice question or MCQ. So let's first look at option A and B together. A says elastic cache for Redis and B says elastic cache for memcached. Between memcached and Redis for elastic cache, we got to choose one. We know that elastic cache for memcached can be used for session storage as required by the question, which looks good. But a problem with elastic cache for memcached is that it only supports encryption in transit and not encryption at rest as required here by the question. Hence, we'll reject elastic cache for memcached and keep option A that is reduced for the time being. Let's look at option C first. C says Amazon DynamoDB. DynamoDB can encrypt the data at rest. Also, DynamoDB is commonly used to store session data or session state with the TTL support. This can be one of the potential answer. We'll park this. Let's look at option D. D says Amazon CloudWatch. CloudWatch cannot encrypt the data at rest. Moreover, if we look that CloudWatch is not a storage service which can store session data during migration. Instead, CloudWatch is a monitoring service we know. Therefore, this is again incorrect choice. Quick tip for the exam, whenever you see options containing Elastic Cache for Memcached and Elastic Cache for Redis in the question, then chances of Elastic Cache for Redis as the correct answer is very high. So if you're confused between these two, always by guess choose Redis as the correct answer in the real exam. And if you're confused with the incorrect ones, so here is the twist that is memcached for, uh, is used for encryption in transit and not encryption at rest. That's what I was referring to. Hence, we'll lock A and C as the correct answer for this. Okay, we have an interesting question this time and this can be related with real world scenario as well. Let's first look at option E. E says IAM rule. IAM rule cannot be used to create an account and register using social media. Therefore, A IAM rule is incorrect. Let's move to option B. B says AWS organizations. AWS organizations is an account management service which helps to consolidate multiple AWS accounts to centrally manage. AWS organization again has nothing to do with social media accounts hence again incorrect choice let's move to option c c says amazon athena amazon athena is a query service athena has no connection with any kind of accounts especially the social media ones hence again incorrect quick tip for the exam whenever you see questions related to social media as mentioned like uh, twitter facebook then think about Amazon Cognito and you should get your answer just like this one. And if you look in the official documentation as well, it's written with a user pool, your users can sign in to your web or mobile app through Amazon Cognito. Your users can also sign in through social identity providers like Google, Facebook, Amazon or Apple and 
through SAML identity providers. So you got to remember this and we'll lock D Amazon Cognito user pulls as the correct answer for this. All right, all right. This is a pretty straightforward question. Whenever there is a requirement for external users, just like this mentioned here in the question where user needs to access S3 buckets like for audit purpose and there is a mention of some kind of duration as per the question it's five days then think about s3 pre-signed url and you should get your answer hence we'll keep option a because there's a mention of s3 pre-signed url and reject the rest which are nothing but distractors and if you look in the same in the official documentation it's written object owner can optionally share objects with others by creating a pre-signed url using their security credentials to grant time limited permission so this was one of the keyword as per the question it was five days so that is time limited permission and another important point if you look anyone who receives the pre-signed url can then access the object for example if you have a video in your bucket and both the bucket and the objects are private you can share the video with others by generating a pre-signed url so that is one of the use case of pre-signed url hence we'll lock a use s3 pre-signed url set the expiration time to five days as the correct answer for this all right we have another question related to lambda and you got to be familiar about lambda because you will get many questions related to lambda as it belongs to serverless architecture let's first look at option a and b a says amazon s3 b says aws cloud formation amazon s3 is a storage service whereas cloud formation is used for templates to create stack since both S3 and CloudFormation are not monitoring service, therefore cannot be used to find possible errors in the Lambda function. We'll reject these two. Now let's look at option C. C says AWS CloudTrail. AWS CloudTrail is used to enable risk auditing or compliance of AWS account. It won't help to find the error in Lambda function in any way as required here by the question therefore c is again incorrect we are left off with option d by the process of elimination which is amazon cloudwatch we know that cloudwatch helps to monitor different resources in aws it can be used for lambda as well so looks good and if you look in official documentation for cloudwatch it's written amazon cloudwatch monitors your aws resources so you got to notice this word resource and definitely lambda belongs to one of the resource as well and the applications you run on aws in real time that's what is required will lock d cloudwatch as the correct answer for this all right we got interesting question and this is again very straightforward whenever you see keywords like real time or streaming data in the question then kinesis should strike in your mind apart from option a if we scan other won't be able to meet the requirement of the question as they are not meant for real time data therefore we can reject straight away option b c and d and we are left out with kinesis and if you look in the same in the official documentation it's written you can take the advantage of the managed service uh, streaming data service offered by amazon kinesis and also it's written here it can continuously capture and store terabytes of data per hour i think terabytes of data was mentioned in the question as well from hundreds of thousands of source there's also mention of hundreds of sources i believe in the question and there's a mention of real time here as well in the official documentation hence we'll lock a kinesis data streams with kinesis client library to ingest and deliver messages as the correct answer for this all right this question looks interesting and it's about security this time let's look at option a a says store the credentials in the source code of a private repository as a best practice we should never store the credentials in the source code if for any reason the source code needs to be shared with others then credentials will be leaked this solution seems not secure therefore we'll reject option a straight away 
Let's move to option B. B says store the credentials in an encrypted file in S3 bucket. Interesting. Use EC2 instance data, user data to store password. This looks suspicious because uh, user data is not meant to store password. Uh, so S3 is first of all never meant to store credentials. We shouldn't store any kind of credentials in S3 bucket. Uh, that is one of the sufficient reason or good enough to reject option B. I will reject this. Let's move to option C. C says create I am role to access the database, attach the role to the EC2 instance. Even if we create I am role, it won't help to rotate the credentials as required here. If you look the keyword credential should be rotated automatically. So this can't be done by I am role. Therefore, option C is again incorrect. We are left off with option D that is use AWS Secrets Manager. Quick tip for the exam. Whenever you see keywords related to storing credentials and the credential needs to be rotated automatically as required here by the question, then thinks about, think about AWS Secrets Manager and you should get your answer. If we look in the same in the official documentation, it's written Secrets Manager enables you to replace hard-coded credentials in your code, including passwords with an API call to Secrets Manager to retrieve the secret programmatically. Also, you can configure Secrets Manager to automatically rotate the secret. This is the keyword, right? Automatically rotate the secret for you according to a specified schedule. Hence, we'll lock D as the correct answer for this. Okay. Okay, this question is related to RDS database. Let's look at option A first. A says use RDS with multi easy deployment. The question is about to optimize read performance and not about providing highly available solution because we know that multi easy deployment is associated with high ability, which is not required as per the question. Therefore, option A is incorrect. Let's move to option B. B says add database retries to effectively use RDS with vertical scaling. Interesting option. This looks suspicious vertical scaling because vertical scaling is the worst thing which can be done as far as designing an effective solution architecture is concerned. Vertical scaling will significantly increase the cost. Therefore, incorrect choice. And if you want to know more about solution architecting, I have a separate course on it on my YouTube as well. Under the playlist section, you can check it out and you'll get more clear idea about how to design solution architecture. I have practice questions for it as well. Let's move to option D. D says add a connection string to use a read replica looks good on an EC2 instance. This EC2 instance again looks suspicious because if we read the question, there is no mention of EC2 instance in the question itself. Therefore, simply we can't use read replica on it. Moreover, read replica is mainly used with RDS database and not with any kind of like EC2 to increase the performance for read only workloads. Hence, we can eliminate this option as well. If we look at the official documentation, it's written RDS read replicas provide enhanced performance and durability for Amazon RDS database instances. They make it easy to elastically scale out beyond the capacity constraints of a single DB instance for read heavy database workloads. This is the keyword, right? Hence we'll lock C as the correct answer. So please, please, please don't go away. Let's meet in part two of this series, which got to be more interesting. And if you like the way I explain, please hit the thumbs up button because it gives me immense motivation to bring out more videos for you.